Hi there, this is Dave, and welcome to the Top 10 Best Switch Exclusive JRPGs. Nowadays, it seems that everything is multi-platform, and it's hard to find an actual reason to buy one console over the other, or a reason that it does not stick straight to the PC. However, Nintendo has always marched the beat of their own drum, and many other games are only available on their console. So here, I'm going to be scouring the massive Switch library to let you know what the best of the best exclusive JRPGs are for the Nintendo Switch. Number 10. Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin I remember whenever the Monster Hunter franchise first came out for the PlayStation 2, then migrated on over to the PSP. And it was a strange take on the tried-and-true action RPG formula. Only rather than going from town to town and buying new stuff, as in a typical JRPG, here you're just kind of thrown to the wolves, giving a huge open world to explore, tons of monsters to fight, and copious amounts of crafting to do in order to upgrade your equipment, only to then delve further out into the wilderness and fight more monsters, and then rinse and repeat. Wings of Ruin takes that general outline, but adds simplified turn-based combat where you control the main character and give orders to your monsties and partners. If this seems up your alley, check out the colorful world filled with monsties to ride, raise, and soar through the skies with. Number 9. Moon RPG Remix This one is a bit more esoteric than the other games on the list, because it's more of a life sim than a true JRPG, but it's super fun and relaxing nonetheless. First of all, it's kind of a game within a game, poking fun mostly at the Dragon Quest series, as you're pulled into the game world, and it's here that you're told that the people lack love for one another. And it's up to you to gather love by helping out the townsfolk, opening up new areas, completing side quests, going on deliveries, and giving gifts. You are decidedly not the hero though, because the hero is actually on his own quest, but he's kind of a self-important ass on a killing spree, slaughtering any monsters unfortunate enough to cross his path. Once you think that the game is normal, some other absurdity just rears its head. The entire thing is just so delightfully off-kilter. Number 8. Octopath Traveler This is the game that started a movement in the genre. It's not often that watershed moments happen that shakes up the mold of traditional JRPGs, but just look around. Everything's coming up Octopath! From Triangle Strategy to the newly announced HD 2D remakes of Dragon Quest 3 and Live Alive. It's all because of this unassuming classical throwback. Here, you follow one of eight heroes, each with their own story, characterization, abilities, and motivations. You pick your hero at the start of the game, then make your way through the land, with each story eventually intertwining as you meet up with one another. If you're looking for a game with a ton of replay value, and a sort of open-world environment similar to Saga, look no further than this. Number 7. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 the first Xenoblade on the Wii was quite frankly one of the best game experiences of my entire life. It single-handedly catapulted the series to be one of my favorites of all time. The second game changed many things from the first, such as the combat and the gacha blade system, which I'm really not a fan of. But I can look past that for the beautiful world full of nooks and crannies to explore. The people of all rest live on the backs of titans amongst the cloud sea and you and your companions are searching for a way to have a true place to call home. Because as the titans wither and die, they sink to the bottom of that cloud sea, along with any settlements built on top of them. So, you search for Elysium, the Promised Land. And let's not forget about the Torn of the Golden Country DLC, which is a game in and of itself, as well as the upcoming Xenoblade Chronicles 3, yet another reason to buy this console. Number 6. Pokemon Legends Arcus Personally, I've never really been a huge fan of Pokemon, and I've made that abundantly clear on my channel. However, now that the series has left the portables, it's really able to branch out and become something much larger than it ever was before. Gone is the super linear, town, dungeon, gym format, and gone is the associated grinding. This is an open region Pokemon, which you can just sink your life into. After you get set up in the hub town, you're then set loose to your own devices to capture, research, and discover different areas, secrets, items, and of course, Pokemon. You can really explore to your heart's content 
until you feel like defeating the required story bosses to move on to the next region. This is a great homage to the history of the franchise, while also showing what the future of the series holds. Number 5. Live Alive As of the publishing of this video, Live Alive hasn't actually been released yet, but that doesn't mean that I can't be excited about it! I've always been a fan of JRPGs, so when there was a major dearth of them a few years back, I dove deep into the translation scene, and that's whenever I first played the original game. For those unaware, Live Alive is an SNES RPG released back in 1994, but now it's being remade in that HD 2D style, and since it's being published by Nintendo, you know that it won't be available anywhere else. It almost plays similar to Saga, insofar as you choose one of seven heroes at the start, each in their own different era, prehistory, the Wild West, Imperial China, Edo Japan, the near future, and the distant future. And once you've completed all the stories, you can play with the final, eighth hidden hero to finish it all up. Number 4. Bravely Default 2 I love job classes. They just add so much replay value every time that they're implemented in a game. My first experience with them was the first Final Fantasy, and then the legendary Dragon Warrior 3. It's no wonder that these are some of my favorite games in their respective series simply because each playthrough is so different. Bravely is an unabashed throwback to these simpler times, complete with a world map, challenging turn-based combat, and not too much story to bog you down with either. The crystals are back with a vengeance, and it's up to you to travel to the four regions of the world to restore their power, fight the evil Asterix holding the job classes, and bring peace back to the land. On a personal note though, can we get a Bravely collection, including four Heroes of Light, and the two Bravely Defaults released on the 3DS? That would be amazing! Number 3. Fire Emblem Three Houses Fire Emblem got off to a rocky start back in the West, and also with me. I remember reading about it in Nintendo Power back whenever it was being released on the NES and the SNES. However, it was only first released here whenever I was in college on the Game Boy Advance. Then, it was still firmly entrenched in that grid-based rock-paper-scissors permadeath combat thing, and despite not really being a fan of it, desperate times called for desperate measures, and I did play every single one, mostly though through with emulation and save states. However, once the series moved away from the dreaded permadeath, I warmed up to it much more, culminating with me singing the praises of Three Houses to everyone who will listen. Sporting three different heroes with three different storylines and tons of different characters, this is the future of the series and an absolute blast to play. Number 2. Shin Megami Tensei 5 I've always had a love-hate relationship with the SMT series. I wasn't really introduced to it until the PS2 era, whenever my nostalgia goggles were definitely off. And while I love Nocturne and Digital Devil Saga, the Personas really weren't my cup of tea. I much preferred the simpler, straightforward story, and focus on combat and exploration of the mainline series, so I was thrilled when SMT5 came out for the Switch. And while it can be notoriously difficult, it's really not too bad if you keep up with your demons, recruiting, fusing, and evolving them appropriately. Slow and Steady does win the race here as you make your way further out into the post-apocalyptic landscape. Each region is super complex, filled with tons of secrets, you could spend hundreds of hours exploring and still not find everything. And number one, Triangle Strategy. I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy Tactics as well as Tactics Ogre, and I'm always on the lookout for a new game in those series. But I'd better not hold my breath since they're kind of defunct. So the next best thing would be a spiritual successor, and that's what we have here with Triangle Strategy. Created in the beautiful HD 2D Octopath style, this is the real deal, following in the footsteps of those greats, but with a few differences. Firstly, it's a bit more story heavy, with exploration scenes and side quests peppered between each battle, and that can either be a positive or a negative depending on your viewpoint. But some definitive positives are that each character has their own assigned job class, there are no generic units, there's no permadeath, and your choices actually matter. Well, that's it for the top 10 best Switch exclusive JRPGs. If you like this video and what I do here on the channel, 
please consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive videos and early access to my content, heading on over to Twitch for some streaming fun, or coming on over to my Discord to chat and hang out. The links to them all can be found in the video description. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.